everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, welcome to ELN Ian Online Mental Wellness with our first session on supporting your mental wellness as a rising leader. Thank you for joining us today. It's such a pleasure to be here with you uh, as a nice little mental wellness break in the day. My name is Carly Lennox. I'm one of the new executive committee members of the Emerging Leaders Network. Before we get started today, I'd like to open our call with a land acknowledgement. Um, recognizing this is an online event, so navigating the best way to make an acknowledgement is still something we're working on, um, but we felt it was important uh, not to leave it out, so bear with us on that. Um, Civic Action acknowledges that the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area is situated on traditional and current Indigenous territories that includes the Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, and Mississaugas of Scobog Island First Nation. The treaties that cover these territories include the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwa and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes and the Upper Canada Treaties. Today, the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area are still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we recognize the historical oppression and inequalities that they continue to face. In our role as a civic convener, Civic Action is committed to rebuilding and renewing respectful relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people and support the important work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. The current Emerging Leaders Network Executive Committee has identified this as a priority for our two-year term, and I'm looking forward to working with our committee members and partners to make progress on this work. For those of you who aren't familiar with the ELN, we are a creation of the Civic Action Leadership Foundation here to develop, connect, and activate the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area's future leaders. Created in 2006, the ELN is 2,500 rising leaders strong and represents a wide range of ethno-cultural backgrounds, communities, and sectors throughout the GTHA. We continue to grow the network of rising leaders, build their leadership toolkits, and incubate new ideas to solve our region's most challenging civic issues. Recently, as a response to COVID-19, we launched ELN Online for new digital programming to keep our network connected and engaged, recognizing that while the challenges we face today are difficult, the need for civic engagement and community has never been greater. For information about some of that great programming, um, or to join our mailing list if you're not already on it, check out our website at leadership.civicaction.ca. That's leadership.civicaction.ca. We'll also send it out, uh, out a link to that uh, in a follow-up email after this webinar. So speaking of great programming, I'm pleased to be your host for ELN Online Mental Wellness. Since the arrival of COVID-19 in our region, we've heard countless stories of rising leaders rising to the challenge. Yet we know this tumultuous time is also taking its toll um, in our recent outreach to our network, we heard that over a third of rising leaders are struggling with their mental well-being right now. As rising leaders in our workplaces and communities, we have a dual role of supporting our own mental health while also supporting those who look to us for help and guidance. Like that airplane safety message says, you have to take care of yourself before you can offer care and support to the people around you. In today's discussion, supporting your mental wellness as a rising leader, we're hoping to cover a few topics. First, the importance of prioritizing your own mental well-being, helpful tips for maintaining mental wellness while social distancing and or working from home or whatever your situation is, um, and strategies for managing stress and anxiousness during times of uncertainty. Um, I also want to recognize that many of us are experiencing this pandemic differently. Some of us are lucky to still be employed and working from home. Some of us have lost our jobs. And some of you are working on the front lines. So whether you're stocking shelves at a grocery store, um, working in a hospital, or delivering food and packages to our front doors, we thank you. Before we jump into today's discussion, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. We've left the second half of today's webinar open to a Q&A with all of you tuning in from wherever you are. So you'll see a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Here you can submit questions and you can vote for other questions being asked that you like. So there's already a test question in there and you can see people are voting for it. Uh, well, we'll try to work through as many questions as possible. We're gonna start with the questions that have the most votes. 
So the more votes a question has, the higher it's going to be on the Q&A box. I hope that makes sense. Um, we also want to take this opportunity to share helpful mental wellness resources uh, within our network, things like online tools or podcasts or articles or anything that you're finding that's helping you stay well and healthy during this time. I encourage you to add your thoughts in the chat feature, so not the Q&A, but the chat. Um, and we'll compile a list into a Google Doc and we'll send that around to everyone who attended today so that we can continue to share. Um, and if you're having any tech issues, just please post whatever it is into the chat um, and someone from our team will reach out for you, reach out with you. If you have any questions about that, just like go into the chat, write it out and we'll, we'll figure it out for you. So let's get started. It's an honor to introduce you to the fantastic panel we have with us today. Chloe Camacho is a mental health advocate and youth advisor at CAMH. She's played an active role in CAMH's Game Changers project which creates resources for youth to feel comfortable starting a conversation about mental health. She's also part of Our Voice Matters, a collaborative project created by CAMH's Youth Engagement Initiative and Healthy Debates. She tells, um, she tells her story about her mental health experience so people know they're not alone. Thanks, Chloe. Welcome. Dr. Donna Ferguson is a board certified clinical psychologist who provides assessment and treatment in the area of post-traumatic stress disorder and other anxiety disorders, primarily with first responders and other injured workers throughout, uh, through CAMH's work stress and health program. Dr. Ferguson's clinical research interests include concurrent disorders, particularly in the area of anxiety disorders and our com comorbid depressive disorders with gambling pathology. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson, for making the time to share with us today. Ryan Martin is the sponsorship lead at Jack.org, Canada's leading youth mental health charity. Ryan shares his mental health journey and the things he's learned along the way to instill hope and encourage others to live mentally healthier lives. Ryan, thanks so much for being here with us. So, I guess we're going to jump right into it. Uh, the first question that I have for you three is, how are you doing? What are some of the things you're doing to, during this challenging time to prioritize your own mental well-being? Do we have an order here or do we just kind of go? Go for it, Ryan. I'll go first. <clears throat> well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, excited to be here and share this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, we talked about this briefly last week, but it, it, even over the weekend, things had kind of changed for me in terms of, you know, how I'm doing. But I've noticed over the past two months, there's been um, just significant kind of waves for me. Um, at the beginning, you know, as soon as we started working from home and I had to move out of my place in Toronto to go back home, um, I just felt like very disconnected with myself. Um, even though I have like such such uh, strong routines of you know mindfulness and meditation and and movement to like reconnect with myself i just couldn't do it and so i felt like the first couple of weeks were for me were just really hard um because i just I, I just totally lost that connection with with myself and my body and, and kind of like my mind i guess and things were just really you know slow around me you know like there wasn't any socializing obviously and not going to the office not going outside but i felt like inside the pace just got like ramped up and it was a really just confusing time and just uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, at that, time, at that point, it was like just firing off all my different coping strategies and just, you know, trying to stick in with it and staying committed. But I really didn't see any, you know, real positive change for a while. But, you know, based off past experience, I know that I just have to keep doing them and things will, will turn around eventually. And then they kind of did. Like after a month of all this, I noticed that I was able to just kind of sit with myself and really just check in with myself and see what I was doing and, and, um, or see how I was doing. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think ever since then it's been fairly steady overall. Um, just really trying to find routines, um, and things have changed. Like my practice with like meditation in the mornings is, is, is quite different now because it just wasn't resonating with how much had changed in my environment. Um, and myself, I guess. And then, you know, like this weekend, things just kind of like I had a total curveball just mentally and and had to take like three days literally just doing nothing because I really felt that my body was telling me I needed it. And so it's just been this process of really listening to my body and, and what I need to do to kind of take care of it. So I think that's where I'm at now. Um, 
today right now I feel a little bit more clear but definitely doesn't help that it's Tuesday after a, a long weekend plus the, all the things that have been going on the past couple of days but I'm uh, I'm here and and uh, yeah I'm present now I think trying to be appreciate you sharing that Ryan I really um, I really that really resonates how you're talking about every every day is different um, I really I really think uh, that's something that needs to be called out because you might be doing really well one day and then the next day and you're not. And um, I think um, that I like how you said, you know, listening to your body and just being kind to yourself. Yes, I, I totally agree. Like when you're talking about that, I think like every day, I just, I told this to a friend of mine who really wasn't doing well last week. And I my mom always tell it to me, like, you know, when, when things are just kind of going you know, wild, try to focus on just today. You know, and if that's too much, focus on, you know, until noon, if it's the morning, and if that's too much, focus on the next hour. I think the kind of theme behind that is just focus on what you can handle and what your body is telling you you can handle. And, and that's really the best we can do. Like, that's like the only thing I should be doing in that moment. It's just listening to my body and taking care of it. Um, and, and really just embracing that change that, you know, we may be going through internally and not thinking, um, I should be feeling fine right now. I shouldn't be stressed about this. I shouldn't feel like the weight of taking care of everyone taking a toll on me. It's just, I am feeling this right now and I need to like respect and listen to that. And how do I best take care of myself, you know, with knowing that now. And then that's when we can use all of our different tools. And this is how I think about it. Um, and it's really helped me over the past two months. Thanks for sharing that, Ryan. Yeah, my pleasure. Who wants to go next, Donna? I'll go. I'll go. Chloe, great. <laughs> I'm Chloe. Um, my mental health, I want to be completely honest, it hasn't been the best during this time. Obviously, I haven't been able to see any of my friends and be able to connect with people like from a social distance. It's like, that's not it, right? Um, and it's been really hard considering like I'm in school and everything had to be switched online. So doing that online has been such a struggle because you're not going to class, you're not being as motivated. So the last couple of days, like Ryan said, like my motivation has just plummeted. Like I haven't done any homework. I haven't done anything. And it's been really hard on me because I'm such a person who's like, okay, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. But at the same time, it's like, I know me and I know my mental health and I need to prioritize how I'm feeling because if I don't do that, then I'm going to go even further into this, like not being able to be happy and stuff. So I really had to like write in my journal. I love writing in my journal, letting everything out. That's my personal therapist right there. When I don't like, I'm not talking to one. I just write everything out, talk about how I'm feeling, what happened during the day. And that has helped me so 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 much and meditating too whenever I'm having like anxiety um or I'm just feeling really bad just connecting within is so amazing because you're listening to what's happening inside and like the first few times it was so hard like you really have to push through like um my <clears throat> meditating because it's really hard at first but then after it's like amazing what your body tells you when you're listening and it's like that's been helping me a lot during this time and obviously like facetiming my friends like that's been the biggest helpful thing ever because obviously my friends are such a big um important aspect of my life that I need to talk to them like every single day and if I'm not talking to them then so I facetime them every single day I'm like they're talking to them and I'm annoying them but honestly like we're all going through this together and in one way or another um but yeah that's what i've been going through thanks um, for sharing that chloe yeah i i just want to echo what brian and chloe are saying because i think a couple themes that came out for me um, that I heard is is the self-care um, and that there's no right way to self-care it really is about listening to yourself, listening to your body, um, connecting with others, journaling, like all of those things are awesome. And they're not for everybody, um, but it's, it's whatever 
makes you get through and helps you feel better. And I think that that's really important, taking it one minute at a time, as Ryan said. Um, it's, not, it's not even one day at a time because, you know, the day can fluctuate, right? So things can change in a day. And so for me, I, I, I echo that I, I like to connect with others. I think that's really important for me in this, this time of physical distancing. Um, I like to, um, you know, I hang out with my kids, my family. I, I watch movies. <laughs> that's a really, that's some really nice downtime for me. Um, just to kind of get away from everything. So whatever it is for me is to, you know, there's a time to connect and there's a time to sort of disconnect and just knowing when you need either or both. And so those are, I think, are really important things for me. Thank you. Does anyone else want to add anything before we move to the yeah, next Yeah, I'll add to Dr. Ferguson's point around like the tools are different for, for like everyone that really just kind of hit home for me because even with ourselves, with myself, like I have all these tools. And at one point, like two years ago, I was like, I went to my psychiatrist. I was like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, I feel, I feel like I've learned every single tool in the toolbox and I was talking about it with everyone and all these things, but, and then, but things still wouldn't be, like I still wouldn't be healthy all the time. So it's like, what else can I do? And I think now I'm at the point where, um, is yeah, like, again, kind of like Chloe is saying, is like checking in with ourselves and hearing, you know, what our body is saying and then doing the things that you know are good for you, but you may not see that positive change you want right away. Um, and it's kind of just staying committed to the practice for me. I can't count like all the mornings when I, you know, do a little bit of movement and stretch and meditation and journal where over the past two months, I just feel like this is just not doing anything. This feels useless, but deep down, I know that it is the right thing to do. Um, and that kind of commitment to those tools that aren't giving the immediate positive feedback, I know will will have a payoff down the road and they do. Um, it's just, for me, it's been interesting, like having a bit of a different relationship with these tools we have because they're not always like immediate, immediate fixes there. They're things that we commit or that I commit to, to have a long-term payoff, which is going to be, um, you know, probably more valuable because it's going to be more sustainable change down the road rather than just a quick little, Oh, I'm not anxious anymore. It's no, this I've laid the groundwork for significant, you know, wellness, um, whether it's a couple of days or a week down the road. It kind of sounds like, um, you know, this is a really weird time and it's a really hard time. And no matter what, you know, tools we're practicing, um, it's still going to be hard. And um, as long as we're, you know, prioritizing, taking care of ourselves and doing what we need to do um, will help. But it's not going to make COVID-19 end and it's not going to make the stress end. Um, so it's normal to have ups and downs and to feel to have a bad day and a good day. And that doesn't mean that we're we're failing because even though we're doing our we're doing our, our tools and we're doing our things that we need to do and it's maybe not working that day, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna move to the next question if that's if that's if that works. Okay. Um, our next question is, um, it's about um, about our, our, our network as, as the ELN. So people join the ELN um, generally because they're, they're people who want to take action, they want to have an impact. And at a time like this, it can be really difficult to find a balance and not take on too much. Um, what advice do you have for rising leaders who are feeling that pressure? I can, I can jump on that. Or, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, for me, th this, this, like, this question or this theme is like very prominent because when this all, when everything kind of went down like two months ago, I, um, uh, so Jack.org works closely with Kids Help Phone and we, you know, we're hearing that they had like a massive increase in calls and, and texts coming in for support from youth um, and that they needed volunteers to help with the text response uh, service. And then immediately I was like, great, I want to give back. And it was like literally the first week this all went down and I like signed up as a volunteer and went through the whole process and got like the training kind of email to like start the training module. Um, and then I just started feeling like totally overwhelmed. Um, but I had this sense of like needing to like step up and give back and support youth and just, yeah, youth across Canada. 
Um, but I just eventually started like pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off. And I, I, I started having a bit of guilt around it. Cause I was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of failing in this sense of like really serving right now. Um, but like back to the question, I just, I, I think I realized for me is like, I can only do so much right now. Um, and the way I want to like serve and give back originally was around kids help home, but I realized that there was a lot for me to do even just with my immediate family and friends, uh, like my grandma and, and yeah, like my, my, my mom, my dad, and my sister and my best friends, like checking in with them. So like that service of like really giving love and checking in was, was already enough for me to handle just in that small circle and doing kids health which I really want to do just wasn't possible. And I'm, and I'm like, that may make more sense down the road, but right now I just can't handle it as much as I feel like I want to step up and, and do. And so, yeah, it's just been kind of for me setting that, realizing I have to set expectation for myself that there's so much going on, you know, more than I've ever experienced in my entire life around the world, like in, the, in our external world, I need to really respect that and listen to that and then kind of readjust my expectations and focus on myself. Um, because I can, if I take care of myself and give myself that love and, and uh, nourishment, then I can really give it to other people. And, and right now all I can handle in terms of giving is, those closest people in my life and, and my colleagues and stuff. So yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at. It's just been a, it, adjusting my expectations. And when this is all over, I very well may, you know, sign up again as a, or not again, I may sign up for the first time as a uh, uh, text, text responder, but yeah, that's kind of my, my view for me. I totally relate to that, Ryan. I also, I, I, I was supposed to sign up for a course and um, had been planning on it, like it's going to good to happen in the summer. I've been planning on it for a year and then, um, couldn't and felt terrible. Um, like I was a failure and I talked to my boss about it and she was like, good for you for recognizing that that was yeah. what you needed. I was like, ah! oh, <laughs> someone yeah. should have told me that. Yeah. You just need, sometimes it's nice to have validation because yeah. we can be our own critics. Yeah. Chloe, how about you? Um, for me, I've been taking an extra course during the summer to like try to get my mind focused on something else. And it's, like I said before, I've lost a lot of motivation during this time, um, which has been really hard. But um, like Ryan said, I uh, volunteer kind of with a, another project at KMH and Throughout the time, like, um, a lot of, uh, like, they needed advice and stuff like that. And it was really hard for me to, like, focus school plus, like, family stuff and then that on top of it. So it was a lot for my mental health. And I just kind of had to, like, step back. And I was like, okay, we need to, like, breathe because I was getting really anxious with how much stuff I had to do. Like, my to-do list was, like, a whole page. Um which was really tough for me. And then I was like, okay, Chloe, you need to like breathe, watch your favorite show and just focus on that for now because I was in a really bad headspace at that time. Um, and yeah, like honestly putting so much, uh, like putting so much responsibility on you is a lot. And if you can't do one thing, like, it's totally fine like people will understand like especially during this time that it is so hard to do anything uh, because you're stuck at home this is the place where you rest this is a place where you just chill out right um so uh people I came were super supportive so yeah that's what I have to say thanks for sharing that Chloe and Donna I know you have three kids at home like you can't just say sorry guys not today <laughs> no mom moms don't get a sick day or a <laughs> or a not today day um it, it, you know it's balancing that uh taking care of the kids it's balancing my my core work that i do at cam h and um and all of the things like this this present love this love doing this presentation um but numbers of, of people are <laughs> asking me to do different things and and pulling at me in different ways and they're all things i really love and i enjoy but i have to also learn to pull back a little bit and say you know is this too much for me am i taking on too much without feeling guilty i think guilt is the biggest piece of it 
where we kind of put that pressure on ourselves that we really need to do this. And if we don't do this, then, you know, you know, we think about what, what will happen if we don't do it. And so that pressure that we put on ourselves, that guilt that we feel is really what drives us to overburden ourselves. And I think much like, you know, everyone saying, Carly, you, uh, Chloe, Ryan, you know, this is really about an extension of self-care and about thinking about what, it, what is it that we can do? How can we balance? and take care of ourselves. And we can't take care of ourselves if we're taking on too much, if we're overwhelming ourselves, if we're feeling guilty about it, if we're overburdening ourselves. You know, that's just not gonna work for us. And we really need to be able to recognize, you know, when we are doing too much, taking on too much and not feeling bad about it, not feeling guilty and just saying, you know what, it's good. I need this time. Maybe I'll take it on again or I'll take it, take it on another time when I feel like I can. But right now, this is not the best time for me, and I'm going to be okay with that. And that's the piece where we really need to be okay with it. For our own first project, sometimes, you know? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Were we going to say, Chloe? Um, I was just going to respond, like Donna was saying, uh, Jungle Flower in the chat was mentioning how um, when you're not doing something, you feel really guilty. And I relate to that so much. <laughs> I am the queen of like, I have to do something um, or I feel so guilty and I'm just like, what am I going to do? I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm wasting my time. Like I have, you only have a certain period of time, like use it to your best ability. Um, but for that, it's like, yeah, that's really good because it keeps you kind of motivated. But at the same time, it's like that burns out really quickly. And I saw that this, the couple last days where I just lost all my motivation because the last couple of days I was just like, okay, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. But then after my, like my energy, it was just not there after, right? And so obviously I felt that guilt of like, okay, three days, I haven't done absolutely nothing. Like, why are you wasting your time? It's like, that's what my head was saying. But I kind of like had to like talk in the mirror and be like, Chloe, like, you need to focus on you right now. It's fine. You can do this this next day. I, like, did a calendar of, like, what I was going to do my next homework. But you need to give yourself, like, okay, you can have this day to do this. Be, do a little bit, like, 10 minutes of your homework. Or, like, do 10 minutes of your work. From So it's just, like, that little bit. So you're just like, okay, at least I did something. But I didn't do all of it. But it's fine, you know? And I feel like I wanted to touch upon that because I am the person who always puts guilt on me. So and blames myself. And I'd, I'd like to add on to that is that you can't really take care of others. Like I can't take care of my kids if I don't take care of myself. You can't be there for others, whether you're helping people, you know, if you're in that profession or you're, it's your family, you know, people are pulling at you all the time. But if you don't really take care of yourself, you can't really give to others. Right, you have to give to yourself first. I think that's really important. Yeah, I hear that. And Chloe, you are an inspiring, amazing woman, and you are enough. So, um, so it makes Thank me you. sad to hear you say that. But at the same time, we all have that feeling sometimes. Yeah, so I, I totally relate to that. It's sometimes how your mind works, you know, and it just plays tricks on you sometimes, but. You yeah. really have to know within. It's like you're an amazing person and you're doing the best that you can, right? And yeah. I try to tell myself that every single day. Yeah. And that's important that you do that, that you tell yourself that, because I know that makes a big difference. I can see that in you. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's a little bit hard because you know it is. Days, <laughs> but, you know, if you keep trying to tell yourself that, it's gonna you're gonna believe it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, this, this is just going down a great path here. Uh, I, I feel like for me, like that self-talk, the judgment is coming from my, my head, my rational brain, like the things, but like that, that love for myself and like really taking care of myself is coming from like my heart and my body. And, and unfortunately for me, like the message I get from my head and my, not my mind, but like my head are so fast and so, so strong and the, the things I hear first. So that's why it's for me so important to take that time to sit with myself, you know, close my eyes, whatever, and really just connect with what's, what's my heart telling me. And for me, it's 99.9% .9 of the time, Ryan, 
you have a lot on your plate right now. Like you're, you're like, you have a lot going on, take care of yourself. This probably isn't going to be a good thing to do for you. This is going to be a good thing. Like call your mom, do this, whatever. And it's just because taking that time to go a little bit deeper um, takes away that noise, which really is just for me, like, you know, surface level thoughts, like they're just thoughts, you know, these things that come in and go out. But if we go deeper, I think we can access that, the message that's truly, you know, coming from a place of self-love and compassion. Um, and one that I really try to listen to and has helped me get through these, you know, past two months and this weekend and tomorrow and the next day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we have one more prepared question and then we're gonna move to the Q&A um, that everyone is sending in. So thanks for sending in those questions and thanks for sending them into the Q&A and not the chat box. Um, so the last question is, um, in this digital age, we, um, there's often an overload of information, really um, sometimes a little too easily available, and it can be difficult to find credible sources. Um, what are some of the mental health myths that you want to take an opportunity to debunk or provide some context around? I can go. Um, I actually spoke about this for my healthy debates um, about my whole story, but I feel like there's such a stigma around medication that it's really like it's bad for you and all this stuff. Um, but I've been on medication for, I don't know, the past like five years. And it's been amazing for me. And obviously, like, it's not for everybody. Don't get me wrong. Like, some people are just not for it or it doesn't work for them, which I totally respect. But I'm just basically saying that if you're uh, proposed the idea about medication, like, don't be hesitant to it because it has changed my life 360. And obviously, the, the, the setup for, like, finding that right medication was so long. It took hour, like months to figure out which one actually worked for me. Um, and I feel like you have to be patient around that because there is something that will help you. Um, either that's medication, meditation, just anything, like talking to someone. Um, but for me, it's like, I really want to talk about medication because I've been on it because before I even went on it, uh, my family was like, don't go on it. You're going to be on it for the rest of your life. Like my friends, all this stuff. But it's like, if it's helping me be a better person to feel better, like all this stuff, why wouldn't I do it? Right. It's making me feel so much better about who I am, uh, how I feel. And, and I'm not afraid. Like if, <laughs> if I got asked to be a panelist for in high school, I would automatically say no because I was afraid what people would say about me. I was so self-conscious, but here I am feeling so much like confident and speaking to 50 people like from across the world. I don't know, but it's just, it feels so great because that's who I am now. Like, and it's not because of medication, but it's because I feel so much better, you know? And I just wanted to say that because a lot of people have a negative view around it. But if you're just positive around like, okay, this is going to help me patient with how long it's going to take it, like, just be positive And like, I don't know, it might help you. That's such a good point, Chloe. The brain is an organ, just like our other organs, right? I think Donna wanted to add something. Yeah, I just, I, if I can piggyback on that, I, I think that that is a, that's a huge, huge uh, ish, issue with people, even with our, our clients, um, who some will feel like, yeah, medication's great, I'll, I'll give it a try. And some people will say, you know what, it's poison, um, this isn't good for me, there's too many side effects. And I think it's really, a, you're right, it's about giving it time, Chloe. Um, you know, many of these medications take weeks to really show an effect. I've had people say that they start the medications and after a day or two, they, the side effects are too severe, they'll just stop them on their own. But they really don't check in with the doctor to see, are you on the right dosage? Am I on the right medication? Like there's a lot of different things that you can try. And so I just wanted to start by saying that you're 100% right about that. And I think we all need to be open-minded about what might be helpful for us because we really don't know until we try it. Um, yeah. Yes, to add on that, 
uh, the first time I went on medication, the first month, <clears throat> it wasn't really helping me. But then I had to wait three months for it to help, right? So you really have to be patient with that. And then <clears throat> I was talking to one of the, my therapists and she was like, okay, let's raise your dosage of your medication. And I had the worst side effects ever. It was awful. I felt so depressed. I wasn't eating. It was just the worst time in my life. And I was telling her, I was like, I think it might be because of my dosage. I think it went up a little bit too much. Can we go just maybe like two milligrams, maybe a little, a little bit more? And she's like, yeah, for sure. Like she was so supportive. She was like, let's talk about how you're feeling. Are these side effects that are happening because of your medication or is it because of something that's happening in your life? Like it was the medication that just made me like, I was basically like, I wasn't thinking and I wasn't feeling anything. I was so, if you're feeling that it's like, obviously you need to talk to somebody because you're supposed to be feeling it. It's just supposed to help you like, ease the anxiety or depression you know like that's what I'm on for anxiety and depression but you know it's like you said it's patience yeah I, I again I completely agree with that I think that's one of the biggest ones and I'm glad you brought that up Chloe I think it's really important to put that out there um you know as for me I also think that um, there's a lot of stigma as we know not just about medication but just around mental health in and of itself I think many of us will go through life and deal with some mental health issue at one point in our lives, whether it be mild, you know, depression, anxiety symptoms, you know, even if it doesn't really meet for clinical depression or anxiety, we will experience times in our lives, even now during this unprecedented time, you know, it's tough to be locked in your home. It's tough to not be connected to people on a regular basis in person. So all of these things are impacting our mental health. And so we need to be kind and gentle and really open the conversation about mental health because there's a lot of issues around people feeling like, you know, you're crazy if you have depression, you're crazy if you have anxiety, you know, you, you know, you're not, you're not healthy, you're not well, you know, you can't function in society, you know, there's nothing that's really going to help you, you know, really move, move over that hump. And I think we really need to really have open the conversation, really, um, you know, eradicate the stigma. And so that we can all feel comfortable coming forward and talking freely, like you did, Chloe, about your medication, freely about feeling, having symptoms of depression or anxiety, which, which even myself, I've, I've been through that. So I think we all need to say we're human. <laughs> we all go through things and it's okay. And those are some of the things I'd like to debunk to say that that's not accurate. You know, we, we are all going to go through it and it's okay and we can all you know, a number of us will, will, will get over it easily with, with treatment. Yeah, absolutely. Ryan. Do you, I just wanted to be mindful of, of the time. Do you want to, I'm happy to just flip over to the Q and A if you want. I'm very easy. If you want to add, if you want to add something, feel free. Sure. Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll try, just keep it, try to keep it concise, but uh, I think for me, if I could say something around mental health or wellness is that it's definitely a journey. Um, and for, for me, not, not a quick fix, but I even just think about, I think thinking about mental health and mental wellness as a journey takes off that pressure to like constantly find like the next thing that's going to make it all better, like immediately. Um, and I think for me, you know, the past six years, like the journey I've, you know, been to some of like my, my hardest, you know, you know, darkest places, but ultimately I've learned the most from those. Um, and then the times when I'm doing really well have just been so much richer because I truly feel that I've gone a little bit deeper with myself and really appreciate where I'm at and the things that I'm learning. And, and so, I don't know, I think for me, it's just thinking about it as a journey, just like the past two months have been, it's a journey. It's not just one one day that defines everything or try to fix everything in one day. Um, I, I really wish someone had, you know, really emphasized that for me, like many, many years ago to take that pressure off fixing things after one appointment or one therapy session or, you know, one medication or you know, all these things we're talking about and thinking of it as like a long-term investment myself that is truly going to help me be more healthier and just more authentic in the long term. Yeah, absolutely. There's no band-aid solution that fixes it all, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you for, thanks for sharing that. My pleasure. Um, so our top question that we have in the, in the, in the Q and a, thanks everyone for sending those in is, let's see. Sometimes it feels like there are so many resources out there that it becomes overwhelming and you don't know where to start. What's the one resource you'd recommend to a friend looking for help or support or advice? My uh, game changers resource I created. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just that right there. Um, I feel like that uh, document helps a lot uh, with starting conversations about mental health. Um, it was created with youth. So it's with like doctor's advice and everything like that, but it also has that youth voice that it's like, okay, we're going to add a little bit of that, you know, let's make this youth friendly, you know, and um, that's a good document to start. <laughs> I'm just plugging that, but at the same time, it's like always talk to a healthcare professional. They're always there for you. Um, they're always going to like want you to succeed. They're never wanting you to like, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I, what's the document? I will send the link. I'm going to find it right now. I'm going to put it in the chat for everyone, but yeah, check that out. Thanks, Chloe. Yeah, I can uh, touch on a couple. So yeah, I work for Jack.org, which is um, a youth mental health charity in Canada that we work across the country. Um, particularly for COVID, like during these times, we actually partnered with uh, kids help phone to create a resource called um, the hub so it's just I again I'll send it to you guys but it's just jack.org slash covid which essentially just was like a, a repository of all the mental health youth mental health resources we could put together between kids help phone us and school mental health Ontario um, so that's a great start but for like these times I also just general and then the other great uh, resource that uh, uh, again, another jack.org resource um, is called bethere.org, which uh, actually just won an award today, an international internet award called uh, the Webbies um, for, for the website. And uh, we're just very happy we celebrated this morning. Um, but essentially, Be There is, is meant to educate people on how to support you know, the, the mental health of their peers. Um, and similar to Chloe, it's a youth, youth focus, youth voice based um, resource. And uh, it's the five, the five golden rules of supporting someone and how to check in, how to have those conversations. So that's a resource really about how can we, better, how can we be better at supporting someone. Um, and then in, in the hub, the COVID hub is about kind of just general mental health resources. So I would say those are two that I've been very involved in and that I recommend. Um, for me, I, I, just to give a plug for CAMH, because we have amazing resources and I actually um, helped put together some of those. So um, really check out our website. We do have uh, COVID and just sort of general mental health resources. There's a lot there. Um, I think, uh, you know, in terms of self-help pieces, um, uh, I really, I will always love Mind Over Mood. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great resource for anybody, especially because it really gives you the baseline of, of what CBT is which I think is really good for dealing with things like depression and anxiety. So it really just is a very good read and it really can give you some, gives you some strategies and tips. And I think for apps, you know, there's a lot of apps out there, but I know that people have raved about Headspace and Calm as two um, particular apps that have been helpful, especially for mindfulness and things like that. So those are my, <laughs> those are my uh, top ones that I would recommend. Thanks, Donna. Would you mind adding the links to those in the in the chat? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I I also am a big fan of Headspace, and I've been using it. There's a there they have sleep um, casts, and I know for me, I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping. Um, and they have uh, they have um, basically like bedtime stories that are just really calming and um, descriptive, and um, I've been a big fan of those lately. Um, the only thing with those is I know sometimes, <clears throat> sorry, my, my throat, um, but sometimes uh, it's expensive and people don't have yes. the money for that um, because I know I've been trying to get Headspace, but it's it was like uh, $40 for a yearly subscription or something like that. And 
obviously I'm a student, I don't have that money. Um, so definitely check out YouTube. They have some great meditations on there um, and just make a playlist on it. So you don't have to like search through the whole internet. That's just another advice. That's a great point, Chloe. Good yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Okay. And I think we have time for one more question at least. Um, so this one is, um, how do you find the strength to still be a rising leader and be present for your community? Um, and I'll even say, you know, your community can mean your friends, your family, broader than that, um, when you're struggling personally um, with your mental well-being. I can touch on that. I think, yeah, so it's about how do we, like, our, when, we're, when we're struggling and then how, what's our outlook on kind of, I think that for me, it comes back to just setting expectations. and like, what am I actually capable of right now in these situations, in these circumstances for me, like with my mental health, like if I'm in the worst of the worst, like it's hard enough getting up to the fridge. So it's probably not going to make sense for me to think that I can go, um, you know, do like volunteering with some mental health services or checking, like checking in all my family members or calling my grandma and like really engaging with her and, and trying to give love to her. Cause I just can't even function that well um, for me. But, um, but I think as for me, like as you know, that spectrum of struggle for me, like wherever I am, it's trying to realize like, what am I capable of right now? And, and what can I do? You know? Um, and, and trying to realize like, what those what those are and setting expectations and it's not easy like I really struggled with that the first couple of weeks of the pandemic but now I'm starting to realize okay like this weekend yesterday I played Settlers of Catan on my iPad for like six hours so that was not a day that was going to be for me to really give um, but today I'm feeling a little bit better so I can probably talk to a friend today and check in with my community um, and kind of give some love but it just really depends on the severity and then realizing where I am on that spectrum for me knowing me and then and then setting expectations and kind of intention good to know that you can play settlers of Catan on your cell phone great tip actually ipad it's even bigger and you can get it really wow. close <laughs> um chloe do you want to add anything uh maybe not to that question but i saw another thing um it was about um, starting meditation. And uh, at first I was saying that it's really hard to start it, but uh, just take 10 minutes each day. Like it doesn't have to be that full, like 30 minute, like big ones. Just do like small little bits and you're gonna find that you're gonna um, understand more and like, talk, like feel what's happening within. It takes a lot of practice, but just starting a little bit each day, like you have five minutes to just, connect with yourself you have 10 minutes right um obviously it's a little bit hard uh because you can be doing other things but if you want to help your mental health like it's totally something i would recommend that's a good tip yeah i know i started with two minutes and then five minutes and it gets easier from there donna do you want to add anything yeah i just think that um you know when it comes to time you know how do you have time and especially if you're struggling i think you know you know, much like we budget money, we need to budget time and we need to budget self-care time. And we also need to budget, you know, when we, when we actually can take care of ourselves, then we can actually be there and connect with other people, like I said before. So I think when we, when we're able to sort of, um, sort of budget the time in our schedule. So if you're, you know, I, I believe in sort of structuring your day, first of all, because I think that's important, you know, getting up at the same time, if you can every day, really pushing yourself to, if you can exercise, even go for a walk pushing yourself to, um, you know, sort of just work through your day, whether you're working or you're not working, and then budgeting that time for breaks, walks, self-care, um, whatever it is you need to do for yourself. And then you can maybe feel like you have something left for someone else. So I think that all of that needs to happen within that structure. Yeah, thanks for that, Donna. Um, I want to, I just want to add a, a small piece. Um, that's kind of a debunking one. That's, I think a lot of people um, think of life divided between work time and um, work, work time bad, personal time good. And mm -hmm. for some people, I know for me, um, 
that I feel when I'm working on something that I really love and I feel passionate about, that's actually a form of self care for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and just because, you know, maybe I'm working a lot doesn't mean that necessarily that my mental well being is suffering. Um, I might feel really motivated by, by what I'm doing and feel really good about it. Um, not all the time, but, um, I know sometimes people feel, uh, you know, you have to stop work at a certain time and that's what creating boundaries is. And sometimes that's absolutely true. But, um, but if you love work, um, then maybe it's not so bad if you're, you're working on something on the weekend and you're feeling really good about it and that's giving you energy and motivation. Yep. Um, okay, we only have a couple of minutes left, so I'm just going to close off with a final kind of quick question. Um, have any of you, have any of the panelists um, encountered people in your lives or in your communities um, who kind of have that, have a um, stigmatized mental health a lot and um, kind of it's become an issue and how did you manage those relationships? Is that clear? Like, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, For me, I actually had a therapy brother who didn't really believe in mental health. I would talk to him about how I was experiencing anxiety and depression and stuff, and he was just like, no, that's not happening. Like, you're just believing it. It's like, this has been going around uh, all over the internet. You're just believing that you have this. I was like, no, I've actually been... um, like diagnosed with this I'm on medication he's like you're on medication I was like yeah I am you know and obviously after he respects me a lot so I explained to him um how what I was experiencing and what was happening in my life and he got a better understanding so I was just being like I was trusting him with a lot of stuff that was going on in my life um but he got a better understanding and actually believed and it's like you know I'm not the only one who's going through this. Like other people in our family are actually going through this. And he's like, oh really? And I was like, yeah, like, you know, it's not only me or it's not only like these other people who are talking about it because we're trying to show people like you that, you know, like this is actually something that happens. Everybody's going to experience this some way or another. Um, But I just was so truthful with him. I told him how I felt. And I was like, I don't appreciate that you don't believe this because a lot of people uh, do struggle with this. And if you were to talk to somebody else, they would have not responded in the same way as I did. Um, He's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. And he apologized and he understood after. But I feel like uh, just speaking to that person and like educating them about everything that's going on um, and how people feel will make them show like there's not that big of a stigma around mental health and you just like speaking about it. Appreciate that, Chloe. I know that's not easy and it, and it you took a risk and it takes a lot of courage to say that out loud. Um, so I really appreciate that. Is anyone else want to yeah, add? Yeah, I'll just right? add really quick. I think for me, I, as Chloe was talking, I was like things are really starting to make sense <laughs> over the past couple of years for me. But I feel that there's almost two kind of roles involved. Like I think for the individual like myself who struggles, it was to be real and be authentic about how I'm feeling and, and, and just truly being authentic. Like I've, that's been so important for me to really help people understand. But yeah, like sometimes it's just people just aren't going to respond to that the way you want. So I think the other piece there is like also having a bit of compassion that people come from such different backgrounds and experiences with mental health and mental illness that um, it's almost, it's important for me to remember that and give them their space and their time to take that in and not expect that they're going to jump on my ship with me right away. It's like, hey, like, I don't know what your story is, but I'm giving you compassion. Um, to to just respect that your your world um and i'm just telling you because i want you to know and that's the only reason i'm telling you because i want to be real but i'm also going to give you that compassion and space and i think that's for me like it's been such a healthy process for that and and i fortunately haven't had like a ton of negative you know you know too much negative feedback from that like aside from parents being a bit hesitant at the beginning but again it's just giving them that space giving them that space and then things eventually had had come together for me 
That's such a thoughtful and compassionate approach, Ryan. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, just to add, um, I have experienced people with uh, sort of negative uh, ideas about mental health and uh, that it doesn't exist and, and that you know, you know people are making stuff up you know to act a certain way and and sort of things like that and um, I agree with Ryan and, and, and Chloe but I, I what I have seen and is when you are compassionate towards people um, you you know you educate as much as you can and again you know that people are coming from different different backgrounds cultural backgrounds and otherwise and that you know, we don't all think the same way and we don't all understand in the same way. And I think really educating and giving people time to have it resonate and understand um, what mental health is, what people do go through, I think is helpful. Not everyone will land on the same page, but at least, you know, if you can kind of do that education and you can have people understand from some perspectives of what people do experience, I think can be very helpful. And again, be patient and understanding and compassionate, I think is helpful for people. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and I just want to thank everyone. We're we're a little bit over time, so I'm going to wrap things up. Um, but I want to thank all of you for contributing to such a rich discussion. Uh, Chloe, Dr. Ferguson, Ryan, on behalf of all of us at the Emerging Leaders Network, thank you again for taking the time to share your knowledge and experience with us today. We so appreciate it. Um, and to everyone who tuned in, thank you. Um, thanks for sending in your questions. I'm sorry that we didn't get to all of the questions. There was just, there's so much to talk about, um, but appreciate you, you, you sending those in. Um, if you share some ideas in the chat box about resources that you're leaning on to protect your own mental well-being, thanks for that also. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to be collecting all those ideas and distributing the list to everyone who registered for today's webinar. Um, and for those of you who sent in questions that we weren't able to get to, or if you enjoyed today's discussion, I'm going to be hosting another one uh, next week on Wednesday, May 27th at 5 p.m. And that one's called Championing Mental Wellness on Teams. So that conversation will be focused on why it's critical that we cultivate mental wellness within our organizations and communities during COVID-19 and how, how you can be a supportive champion uh, of mental well-being within your teams. Um, we have another really great lineup of panelists, so I'm excited for another really great discussion. Um, we are also hosting another virtual conversation tonight at 6.30 p.m. with Mississauga Mayor Bronnie Crombie, uh, where rising leaders can ask their questions about how Mississauga is handling COVID recovery and relief. Uh, so it's not too late to register if you'd like to join. We hope to see some of you there. Um, so thanks everyone again and have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>